Hey guys, how's it going? This video is going to be about the unforgivable sin, which is blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. I've heard four different teachings and interpretations on how one can blaspheme the Holy Ghost. So I'm going to look at all four of them and then I'm going to share what I believe. And so the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost and the unforgivable sin, which is the unforgivable sin, is mentioned in Matthew chapter 12, Mark chapter 3, and Luke chapter 12. So when people come across this for the first time, they freak out, you know, usually Christians who are wanting to serve Jesus and give their life to Jesus, they're, they're learning the truth. They come across this scripture and they freak out and wonder if they've ever committed this sin. Now, if you are striving to give your life to Jesus Christ, you've received him into your life, received him as your Lord and Savior, then you have not committed the unforgivable sin because somebody who has blasphemed the Holy Spirit is somebody who wants nothing to do to do with Jesus. Now there is an exception, which I'll explain as we get further into this topic. But I want to look at the context of Matthew chapter 12 and verse 31 and 32, which where it says, Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Now, if we read the verse in context and see what's going on in order for Jesus to bring this up, we see that he just got done healing and delivering a guy. In verse 22, it says, Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. So... There was basically a miracle that took place. Nobody can deny it. People saw it. They were amazed. So there was a spiritual display of power that was right there for people to see. So people knew that he was either of God or it was of Satan. Now the Pharisees called it satanic and demonic. And Jesus went on to explain how foolish of a statement that was. By saying, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? So he was basically pointing out the fact that if I was doing this by demon power, then Satan is divided against himself. Because you're not going to see a Satanist going around casting demons out of people. Satan is not going to free people of his demons when he's trying to keep them bound and drag them to hell, you understand? And Jesus went on to say in verse 28, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Now, he goes on in verse 31 to say, Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. So he was saying that you can speak against him, and you can take his name in vain, and that's forgivable if you repent, of course. And he goes on to say, But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. And then you go down to verse 37, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So that's just interesting to see there. But when we look at the situation, we see that the Pharisees called a move of the Holy Spirit or a work of God demonic. They called it satanic, of the devil. Okay, They said, this fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. So they accused him of using satanic power, and Jesus goes on to use that to bring up the unforgivable sin. Now, the first teaching that I want to apply, or I mean that I want to share that I've heard, is that this no longer applies for today. Now, I've heard people teach this and use a bunch of scripture and explain it, but I don't agree with that. Because they try to say it was only when Jesus was here, when Jesus was walking the earth. That was the only time people could blaspheme the Holy Spirit. But that doesn't make any sense because he's clearly saying, Whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, speaking of himself, it shall be forgiven him. Now, I'm sure at one point or, or another, we've all taken the Lord's name in vain. You can be forgiven for that. But when you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, that's another story. So people try to say, all oh, this no longer applies. 
that's I think that's foolishness because he's specifically saying it's the Holy Spirit. You cannot blaspheme. Who did Jesus send when he ascended unto the Father? He sent the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, is still present. The Holy Ghost is still present on earth. So you can still blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Anybody who says you can't is lying. Okay, they, I don't know what kind of interpretation or seducing spirit they're listening to, but you can still blaspheme the Holy Ghost. This still applies today. Okay, don't let anybody tell you different. All right, now I want to get into the second interpretation that I've heard. Someone who calls a work of the Holy Spirit satanic is somebody who has blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Now, I believe there is a level of ignorance that is permissible. This is something for, for God to judge in most cases, guys. But there's just other times where you know. Now, if somebody has called a move or a work of the Holy Spirit satanic and demonic, like the Pharisees, People have said that's blaspheming the Holy Ghost. So, you know, I kind of can agree with that. But also there can be a level of ignorance because, you know, you get Christians who think that, oh, deliverance isn't for today or stuff like that. And they say speaking in tongues is demonic. You need to be careful, okay? Because if people are speaking in tongues by the Holy Spirit, then, you know, you get these Pentecostals who say, oh, you, you called my tongues satanic. You've blasphemed the Holy Ghost. You're going to hell. See, there needs to be a level of spiritual discernment and knowledge. So notice it has to be blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. There has to be spiritual knowledge there for you to know what you're doing. Now, if these people have been taught that the gifts have ceased, they've been taught that uh, deliverance is for today, then yeah, they'll have the idea that, okay, this isn't of God because I don't believe it is. Because they've been taught to believe that. So this is when it's for God to judge. But if somebody has knowledge of the spiritual power of God and the spiritual power of Satan, and they call a move of the Holy Ghost, and they know it's of God. See, I don't think these Pharisees were ignorant because they knew the word of God. They were familiar with the Old Testament, which was full of signs and miracles. And so I believe they had knowledge. They didn't like Jesus, okay? They wanted a Jesus who came, you know, ruling with an iron fist. And they wanted a king, okay? They wanted somebody with worldly power. Jesus came with spiritual power, okay? He was humble, lowly, meek, okay? And so he hung out with sinners. He called them to repentance, of course. But, you know, they were always accusing him of breaking the laws. They were always trying to get him to stumble in his doctrine. And they didn't like him because he was taking attention away from themselves. The Pharisees were self-righteous people who wanted people to come to them for the way of salvation. They wanted to be exalted. This is why Jesus said your righteousness has to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees if you want to go to heaven. Now... You know, so that's why there was this always this disputing going on between the Pharisees and the scribes and Jesus. So, you know, the argument can be made that they were ignorant. But, you know, you go to John chapter 3. I want to point out how I don't think they were completely ignorant, as some would think. Because in John chapter 3, we see there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. And he was a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, For no man, or he said, he said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And he said, We. So he was including other, G, other Jews in that statement. Sorry. And he said, We. Know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So there was a level of knowledge there. So, you know, this is why I say it's for God to judge. So, you know, let's go to the third teaching, the third interpretation that I've heard. Somebody who has blasphemed the Holy Ghost is someone who rejects the gift of salvation. I've heard people say that, oh, blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is just 
rejecting rejecting the only way of salvation just choosing to know that jesus can save you but you know saying oh i don't believe it or rejecting or something like that now this i kind of agree because if you don't have the holy spirit in you you're not going to go to heaven in romans chapter 8 i mean that makes it pretty clear in romans 8 and in ephesians chapter 1 let's go to romans 8 it says in Romans 8, 9, it says at the end of the verse, Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And Ephesians chapter 1, it talks about how the Holy Spirit is what seals you unto the day of redemption. Ephesians 1, 13, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And so you have to have the Holy Spirit because this is how you are born again. This is how you overcome sin. The Holy Spirit teaches you and guides you into all truth. And so, you know, you look at these things and someone who rejects Jesus, they reject the gospel, they reject the only way of salvation, I guess could be considered a form of blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. But again... They're rejecting eternal life. They're not, they're not necessarily blaspheming the Holy Ghost, okay? When you get to knowingly, you knowingly blaspheme the Holy Ghost, there has to be a knowledge of who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit does and what it is responsible for, okay? Now, this brings me to the fourth point, or the fourth one I wanted to share. Someone who knows the truth and follow Jesus then turn their back on the Lord, Okay, for example, I know the truth, I know the spiritual power of God, and I know there is satanic power. Okay, I have operated in spiritual gifts, I know what it means to follow Jesus, I have the Holy Spirit in me. Now, if I were to pretty much turn my back on the Lord, go and, and give blood to Satan, and conjure up some principalities and say, I want to sell my soul for millions of dollars and I want to be famous and rich or whatever. This goes on, guys. People sell their souls all the time. And so, if I were to do that, that would be considered blasphemy of the Holy Ghost because I would be knowingly turning my back on the Lord, knowingly turning away from the Holy Commandment that was delivered unto me. And that would be blasphemy of the Holy Ghost because I, cho I chose to go against the Lord, to go against the truth, to go against the Holy Spirit. Now, these people who are high up in the satanic you know, world and Freemasonry, the way up there, these people know that they're against Jesus. These people know that they've blasphemed the Holy Ghost. They know they're fighting the Holy Ghost, okay? But these people are so deluded, they think Lucifer is going to win. They think Lucifer is the true God. This is how deceived these people are. Now, when you get into Freemasonry and stuff like that, and Satan, Satanist and stuff like that, they make people blaspheme the Holy Ghost as part of their rituals and stuff when they're trying to move up. This is required, okay? This is why when Satanists are recruiting people, one of the initial things they make people do is make a video of themselves blaspheming the Holy Spirit. This is why there's thousands of YouTube videos of these reprobates who are cursing and rejecting and denouncing and just speaking foul things against the Holy Ghost or saying they don't believe in it, they reject it, whatever the case may be. There's thousands of videos of people doing this. The blasphemy challenge is what it's called. And so God knows their hearts. Would they be considered uh, committing the unforgivable sin? I'd say it's a good example because Jesus said in uh, Matthew 15, 18, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. Now, when somebody makes a video of themselves speaking a blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, cursing the Holy Ghost, saying they reject it, deny it, whatever. Okay, this is somebody who has premeditated doing this in their mind and in their heart. Okay, because they had to get the camera ready. It was already in their mind. It was in their heart already. So they probably already did it in their heart for it to come out of their mouth. This is somebody who is going to be turned over to a reprobate mind if they haven't been already. Now, this goes back to the level of ignorance. See, if somebody just 
is an atheist, but they don't really know the truth about God's power. They don't know the power that's in Jesus Christ or the power that's in the, in the Holy Spirit. Okay? They don't know. They're not aware of these things, and yet they're just choosing to reject this because they want to choose logic and science. And, you know, I've heard all of these ex excuses. And, um, you know, that's a whole other argument, too. You get into epistemology and, you know, circular reasoning with these people. Arguing with atheists is just a dead end, guys, I'm telling you right now. And so, you know, anyways, there has to be a level of knowledge. Now, if these people are just doing it because they're just trying to be cool or this is what they believe, that's for God to judge. Because if somebody does it out of ignorance, they don't really know what they're, they're doing, how serious it is, God could still break them and bring them to repentance. See, but that's for God to judge. You know, because I believe there has to be a level of knowledge there. You have to know who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit does in order for you to directly, knowingly blaspheme it, you know. So, you know, when looking at these four different interpretations, you know, the teaching that this no longer applies is false. It's completely false. Someone who calls a move of the Holy Spirit satanic, that can be unforgivable to an extent. Again, that's for God to judge, okay? If somebody knows that that was a move of the Holy Spirit, but they just call it satanic, demonic, because notice the Pharisees, we, they were religious. They believed in God, okay? They thought they were saved. They kept the law, and yet Jesus called them of the devil, you see? So, you know, there's that, that line that you need to be able to discern, and then you go into someone who rejects the gift of salvation. I, I kind of can agree with that to an extent. Because it's, it's unforgivable. When you reject the only way to be saved, well, you're going to hell then. That There is no other alternative. You will see hellfire and perish for eternity if you reject Jesus Christ. That's all there is to it. And then you go into someone who knows the truth, followed Jesus, and then chose to turn their back because the deceitfulness of riches... And the cares of this world came and choked the word, you know, like the parable of sower I did a video on. So that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, you can know the truth and still turn away and not go to heaven. I mean, this is why the Bible says in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. You can't depart from something you weren't a part of. OK, they went out from us, but they were not all of us. So, you know, there's there's different ways to look at it. And so, I just wanted to share that. But like I said, my take on it is there has to be a level of knowledge. And yes, it still applies for today. But if you're striving to follow Jesus Christ and you want to serve Him and give your life to Him, then no, you haven't committed this unforgivable sin. So, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or I wasn't clear enough on something, feel free to ask me or contact me. Otherwise... Be blessed in Jesus Christ's mighty name, guys, and I'll talk to you next time.